Developments in the mystery of Flight 370, Malaysia's Prime Minister making his first comments about the plane, saying the investigation has now entered a, quote, new phase. According to the Prime Minister, the latest information confirms that whatever happened on board was a, quote, deliberate action. He says the aircraft communication systems were intentionally disabled, which is why investigators are now looking into whether this was a hijacking carried out by passengers on the plane or perhaps the actions of a rogue pilot whose motivations remain at this point unclear. So many unanswered questions. Initially, there was word that the plane had been up in the air for four hours, leaving search crews with a 2,400-mile radius to search. But now comes word that the plane was airborne for up to eight hours, greatly expanding that radius to 4,000 miles. However, air and sea search crews are concentrating on two quarters, quarters, the first from the border of Kazakhstan to northern Thailand, the second from Indonesia to the southern Indian Ocean. Clearly a huge parameter. For more on what was said to the prime minister earlier this morning in his news conference this morning, we're going to turn to ABC's David Curley. Good morning, David. Good morning, Bianca. This does confirm our reporting, which significantly narrows the theories of what happened to this jetliner. It now appears it was taken over either by a rogue pilot or it was hijacked, as you mentioned, and it did stay in the air much longer than we thought. It's now clear, say investigators, communication gear switched off, the changing direction of Flight 370 appear to all be done on purpose by someone at the controls. These movements are consistent with deliberate action by someone on the plane. This is the latest, a 1241 departure for the Red Eye flight from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. But just past 26 minutes in, a data signaling system is shut off. Then 40 minutes in at 121 in the morning, the 777's location transmitter also shut off. And now confirmed, the plane does turn around, heading back across Malaysia and is last seen on radar at 2.15 a.m. But this morning, we know, because the jet was signaling a satellite each hour, it turned again, either north or south, and flew for another six hours at least, 3,600 miles. A source and experts tell ABC News the southern route is the most likely, uncovered by radar, putting the Malaysian jet somewhere off Australia. Why and who did this? One unnamed Malaysian official is quoted as saying, it's conclusive, it's a hijacking. The Prime Minister, though, did not agree. Despite media reports that the plane was hijacked, I wish to be very clear. We are still investigating all possibilities as to what caused MH370 to deviate from its original flight path. And that includes the possibility that one or both of the pilots went rogue, turning off that communication gear and turning around. We only know how far this plane flew because of those satellite pings, and we and the world's pilots only learned a couple of days ago that that system cannot be shut off by a pilot. So the search of the South China Sea, which is north of Malaysia, has now been called off. No reason to look there. A new search will undoubtedly begin off Australia. But even though we know when the jet last pinged the satellite, it could have flown for another hour or so. So there's still a bigger area to search, but not as big as what it could be. Dan? Huge area to search, and this mystery just deepens. David Curley, thank you for your continuing coverage. This new information this morning gives new urgency, of course, to the investigation into the pilots. In fact, just hours ago, Malaysian police arrived at the home of the plane's captain, and ABC's Bob Woodruff is in the Malaysian capital of Kuala Lumpur with the latest this morning. Bob, good morning. Well, good morning, Dan. You know, this news is just sweeping across this country of Malaysia right now. This has been going on for seven days now. The people have been criticizing the police for not searching through the homes of any of the pilots or crew members. Well, that's changing today. While search teams continue looking for the plane, the police here are trying to learn more about the crew members and passengers, including the pilots. So far, for the first time this week, they searched the home of the pilot, Captain Zahari Ahmed Shah. ABC's Gloria Riviera was there at his gate watching the search. It was just after 2.42 p.m. when an unmarked vehicle, a white van, came up to the security gates here. It was carrying two officers in plain clothes. They said they were from Malaysia's police headquarters. Just after that, a police car with two officers in uniform came in. They spent over two hours here. It's an upscale area. Neighbors say it's a tight-knit community. Zahari is 53 years old, married with children. 
In his home, he has his own flight simulator. Also on the manifest is co-pilot Fariq Abdul Hamid. He is 27 and now engaged to be married. I visited his house yesterday. No one answered the door. Everyone I spoke to said nice things, especially this Malaysian singer, one of his closest friends, Kalisha Ray, who grew up in the same hometown in Penang. Fariq is a very nice guy and he is still young, so I don't think he's involved. As the Prime Minister spoke today, family members watched it closely, hoping for good news. This father's 29-year-old son is on that plane. His hope now is that he is still alive. One of the questions this morning is, why did it take so much time for the government to reveal this kind of information? Well, it's been told by many people that if they did, people around the world have an idea where the plane may be and they can search. They could look for any signs of it. Well, today, the prime minister said that is the reason why they did finally release it today. Bianna? A lot of people are probably saying that's not good enough. All right, Bob, thank you. And despite all the new information, there are still many unanswered questions about what happened on board Flight 370. And for that, we're going to turn to ABC's Pierre Thomas, who has more on the investigation and how it's proceeding from Washington. Pierre, good morning to you. Does it surprise you that it took this long, eight days, for investigators to search the pilot's home? Did they waste valuable time here? Sources are saying they clearly did, that the pilots would have been focus number one, something you needed to jump on early in this investigation. And quite frankly, this is the quandary that U.S. law enforcement finds himself in. The FBI is not on the ground in Malaysia. They have no capacity to investigate. The Malaysians are in complete control. Even though there were Americans on this flight. So what is U.S. law enforcement going to urge Malaysians to do now and to look at? I expect them that they will push them to focus on the mental health and personal life of the pilots and the crew. They are the people that had easy access to the plane, control of the plane, so they want to know was there something going on in their personal lives, was there, were there mental health issues that needed to be resolved. That would be job number one. As we heard, the Malaysian Prime Minister called the incident a deliberate act. What are your sources telling you about their thoughts on whether or not this is terror related? Well, so far they found no evidence of terror ties uh, for the crew or passengers or anything like that. And one source pointed out, actually a number, that the plane had ample, ample opportunity. The pilots or whoever was in control of that plane had ample opportunity to hit a populated area with a plane full of fuel. So they're a little bit less concerned about that. On the other hand, they say the fact that this plane was in the air so long and we still don't know where it is, huge problem. A huge mystery and of course our thoughts and prayers are with the family and loved ones of all those passengers still not knowing what happened. We appreciate your time this morning Pierre. Dan? Thanks Bianca. Let's bring in ABC News aviation consultant John Nance who's a former commercial pilot. He joins us from Seattle. John, good morning to you. Uh, we're now good looking morning. at a huge swath of the planet Earth that needs to be searched here. Even though they've narrowed it down yeah. to uh, two quarters, we're still talking about huge, huge sections uh, to search. How can they even begin to do this? Uh, you do this like eating an, elef uh, an elephant, one bite at a time. In other words, you're going to have to basically decide what your search grid is, and they're going to have to go at it just slice by slice by slice. And the opportunity to be able to find this airplane, if it really is in the water, Dan, is very, very small. So if it's in deep water, in some points in the ocean, we're talking several miles down, how would they, even, even if they found it, how would they retrieve it? It's going to take a lot of special equipment. Uh, there's not all that much of it on the planet. You're going to have to go down to 14, 15, 16,000 feet, and retrieving that is going to be quite a quite a project. I mean, this is a, akin to finding the Titanic and being able to bring some stuff up. Uh, first of all, they've got to locate it, of course, and that is a needle in a haystack. Well, let me ask you, you have been in the aviation business for decades now. Does your gut tell you anything about what happened here? Yeah, with these supposed facts, as long as they don't change about the sequence and the t shutting off of radios and so on, Dan, this is a hijacking, but it's probably an internal hijacking. In other words, one of the pilots. It could be an external. But whoever was in control of this airplane after the turn knew what they were doing. They took it up to 45,000 feet. Uh, the chilling possibility there is it was for the purpose of killing the passengers. Chilling possibility indeed, and uh, we keep saying this, but it remains true. This is a mystery and an unprecedented one. John Nance, we really appreciate your uh, guidance this